Susana es en Colorado. Hola, hola Susana en Colorado. Yeah. Hola tú, our other, other Susana who's in Colorado. I think she said this was the last week she would miss, she would be in Colorado. Um, okay, fall out of the back of a truck. What a way to open a video. Um, <laughs> caerse, caerse. So here's, here's the uh, new snippet. A, a, a new and yet different way to use se. Sometimes se is not about um, passive. Sometimes it's about uh, something, and it's actually in one of the videos that I only showed you a partial of. Uh, sometimes it's about um, my daughter's professor at ASU struggled to explain this. She said, I was really flattered. She said, that is the best way your mom has to describe that. I've never thought of that myself. It is accidental events. It is when you absolutely renounce any responsibility for something being your fault. And that is the truth. And I was so surprised because my daughter's prof said, that is exactly what it is. I never thought you could explain it that way. <laughs> That's what it means. Okay, so now you may say, what the heck does that mean? Okay. And uh, actually, I also need to bring up, I forgot to look up your homework page. I'm gonna bring up the share screen where we'll talk about that very, very briefly. I hope I can find the correct whiteboard. Wow. Uh, whiteboard, we'll see if this works. The problem with whiteboard is sometimes it needs time to really, really think about, will it give me a box to type in? Oh, yay, today it did. All right. Otro uso de se. Bienvenidos, welcome. Otro uso de se. Uh, otro uso, oh, perdón. Otro uso de se. Uy, ay, 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 ay. Ah, uh, oh, we've got folks coming in. Otro uso de se. Um, eventos. Uh, and let's just guess because I am guessing how this works. I'm just going to guess that we make this as big as we want. Oh, hopefully it will take us lower. Vamos a ver. Vamos a ver. No. Okay. Um, Eventos inesperados. Esperar means to wait or to expect. Eventos inesperados, inesperados, unexpected. Mm. Set is used for unexpected events. Or even better, o sea, o sea, that is to say, uh, you do not want to accept blame for whatever happened. And that, in fact, is, that is the reason for using this. I will show you what that means. And we're going to use, uh, use it with, uh, well, this isn't exactly why with, with caer, but Caerse, the how this all started was caerse. Caerse reflexivo. Caerse reflexivo quiere decir, means quiere decir, to fall down or to fall off. So if you want to talk about something falling out of a vehicle, it's se cayó del camión. Se cayó del camión. He fell out of the truck. But sometimes you hear se used with caer and it's not quite fell out. It's like this. Um, se me cayeron, and it's almost always in preterite, by the way. Uh, los vasos. Se me cayeron los vasos. Literally, that little se is not the same as se cayó del camión. He fell out of the truck. It's not quite the same. Se me, and se me looks like that. Doesn't that look wrong? Doesn't say may look like you shouldn't be able to use those two things together. Okay. Se me cayeron. Se me cayeron um, means 
the glasses, uh, meaning glasses that you drink out of, not glasses that you see out of, right? Those are gatas or anteojos or lentes. Uh, the glasses went and fell uh, out of my hands. It happened to me. This thing, this event, which is a bad event, it happened to me and it's not my fault and I don't accept responsibility for it. All that stuff is packed into se me cayeron los vasos. They went and they dropped themselves on me. They went and they fell out of my hands and I didn't mean, so eventos inesperados, unexpected, uh, unexpected events means something that happened that you did not anticipate that you literally did not plan. And it takes a verb that you know very well and it kind of twists the meaning around to turn it into something that is a big oops. This only is used with some verbs, not all, some, quite a few. Here's another one that we use a lot. Uh, and you'll notice these are all going to start with se, but the middle pronoun is going to be a me, te, nos, uh, le, or les. But they all start with se, uniformly. It doesn't matter who the, the oops happens to, it always starts with se. So, uh, se nos... Olvi ah, se nos olvidó el documento. Se nos olvidó el documento. Literally, uh, the document went and forgot itself on us. But what it really means is <laughs> we totally forgot the document. Not our fault. It's like saying, it's, we have this in English, it slipped our mind. Or is it minds in English? <laughs> I don't know if that's my, it slipped our minds or it slipped our mind. It slipped my mind. You know, you forgot it and it, gee, it just happened. Se nos, it happened by accident. The nos tells who it happened to, it happened to us. But no se olvidó. And these are all going to be in preterite because when these events happen, it, it's not like you can say, I am accidentally forgetting it right now. No, it happens after it's already done. So it's got to be a past. Yeah. So olvido uh, matches up singular to documento. Olvido does not get conjugated for we, because remember, we don't accept responsibility. Therefore, we did not do it. Vasos, vasos, drinking glasses, they went and they fell. They fell from us, from our arms, our hands, whatever we were using to carry them. So the verb is never conjugated for who it happened to. It's conjugated according to the thing that got broken, got lost, got forgotten, got left behind. Here's another verb. This happens with a lot. Uh, oh, somebody may ask you this. Se te... Oh, I don't... Se te acabo la cerveza? You're at a party. You know that acabar means to finish to end something. <laughs> end the beer? Okay, <clears throat> the set tells you it's an oops. The taste says it happens to you. Somebody is asking you, did you run out of beer? Oh, run out. Ah. Did the beer go and finish itself off on you? Uh, se, te, uh, se te acabó la gasolina. Did you run out of gas? You didn't mean to run out of gas. In the middle of the party, you sure don't want the keg to run dry, but it just happened. 
So did the beer just finish itself, go kaput on you? <laughs> you know, you were not, you were not miserly and purposely say, I'm going to just get a six pack when I know there are 40 people coming over. No, no, no. <laughs> you tap the keg, shoot, everybody went glug glug and now it's all gone. Are you kidding me? We ran out? Yeah. Um, is there ever a say, say? No. No. Ah, so how that will go is, say me, if it happened to me. Say te, if it happened to you. Say nos, if it happened to us. Whoops. If you want to say it happened to him, it happened to her, it happened to polite you, it's se le. Oh. Ah. I'll say se. It happened to her, him, her, you, polite. Yeah? Okay. Uh, se, can you guess what the next one's going to be for plural? Le again. Le. Oops. It happened to them or it happened to oops, better than uh, you guys, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so it'll always be one of those combinations. It's always se me, se te, se nos, se le, se les. Always. So and the verb part will usually be in past because since it's an accident. It's over with, right? So it sounds like, not that I would have the skill to do it or to understand it, if something happens by the way they're phrasing it when they speak Spanish, when someone speaks Spanish, they can either, by the way they're saying it, say there's blame here or there isn't blame. I mean, one of the- Yeah, totally, totally. Especially the olvidar, olvidar in particular. Uh, you know, I forgot my homework, teacher, that, yeah, that kind of thing. Um, it wasn't really my fault. Um, uh, th this, you know, and not all verbs will do this. So you can't say, can I take any verb and do this? No, certain <laughs> ones, certain ones. And I won't get into all of them tonight, but since caerse, fall down came up, <laughs> yeah, we can use this one with the se and the extra pronoun in there. But see, it's always a double pronoun, and it's se and an indirect. It's se and an indirect. Me, te, nos, le, or les. But always se starts it off. And that's the signal when they somebody hears a se me or a se le, it's the signal of here comes an oops. Here comes somebody saying, it happened to me, it happened to you, it happened to somebody. And it was an oversight, a mistake, an accident. Something so, for which I'd claim no responsibility. Now, si, Tomas. Are, are there any rules, because some of this is uh, statement driven and some of it sounds like it's question driven and part of that is just the inflection point of how the person speaks. So are, are there any, you know, best practices, guidelines that would help us as we think about this from a question versus a statement? Oh, well, you'll, you'll hear it in their voice, okay? Okay. Um, por ejemplo, si se me cayeron los vasos. And it starts up and it goes down. Start up and go down. It's a statement. The, the pitch of your voice start going high and goes down. It's a statement. Se me cayeron los vasos. Ah, se nos olvidó el documento. But now, listen to the difference. Se te acabó la cerveza. When the intonation, the fluctuation of your voice goes up, they're asking you a question at the end. As we often do in English, maybe not all the time, but often, right? Um... Uh, Eso es, yeah. That's one of those, it's, it's a fun thing. It's a fun thing. Um, 
I don't expect you to actually put that into use yet. We might play around with it a little bit and amplify it on, on it another night. Uh, because there are certain verbs that work really well with this and, and that, you know, can happen a lot in conversation, but others that, you know, you won't need at all. Um, so it's like a finite set of, of verbs that you need. And you know, you really need this not so much to be able to say it, but to know when somebody says it to you, that it was, a, that it was an error that was not foreseen. Something that people did not intend to happen. So you know somebody's excusing themselves, <laughs> literally, when they do that. Aha. Yeah. Wow, I wonder if I can figure out how to make that save. Oh, it's saved somewhere. I guess I'll find out where later. <laughs> yeah, where did that go? Show in folder, where'd it go? Oh, when my documents, well, all right, that's logical. You just never know. Um, oh, use. Ah, although it kind of yeah. messed up my, my spacing there. Did not like my spacing, so it mushed everything together in the middle. Sorry about that, guys. Um, okay, all of a sudden I looked and that word became use. That sounds like my friend from Pennsylvania. Okay. And with the Acabo, is that any relation to Acabar Day? Or it, it is related to Acabarde, uh, in a way, right? Uh, and this is one of those things, this is one of those words that will morph to do different things. So, you know, we ta talked about putting like prefixes on words or suffixes on words. Acabar by it, uh, its lonesome self, is to finish or to end. Uh, and yeah, uh, so you know, when when they use this with a thing like leche, well, like gasolina, like cerveza, they're telling you that that quantity that one had of the milk or the gasoline or you know whatever it is, it's used up. It, it's ended. So they're just taking that word, right, and twisting it around. So a lot of times, even if you don't know, you know, technically, wow, what were they using it? Just think of the context of all the other words around it. Se, se me acabó, o, o te acabó la cerveza? Did you run out of it? Did it finish itself off on you? It's like we would say it's gone. The beer's gone. Yeah. The ran out. Gone. It's like saying ran out. Yeah. And when you think of run out in English, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense either. It no. ran out? Run out? What the heck is that? Yeah. Uh, ran out is the closest thing we've got to that. And you perfectly, you perfectly know what, oops, mm -hmm. what run out means. But you know, when you translate run out into English, run sounds like walking very quickly, doesn't it? Yeah. And how can, how can you run out of milk? Yeah. But, pero así es, pero así es. Uh, okay. Un evento inesperado, an unexpected event. We got a little extra use of se in. <laughs> okay. I don't expect you to be able to use it. We'll try that another for that another time. But if you hear people say it, oh yeah, that they might be signaling to you, here comes uh, a, a mistake or um, an I didn't mean for this to happen kind of event. Uh, eso es. A ver. So, so if you word it in a different way, would it make it sound like you meant for it to happen? Uh, no. You um, well, you know, especially with forgetting stuff in Latin culture, and they are the first to admit this, so I am not doing a racial stereotype. <laughs> you know, it's the land of mañana, as mm. a lot of you know. It's mm -hmm. the land of mañana. And if things don't get done immediately, well, uh, so to forget something, you know, no one ever wants somebody to think like, gee, I did that. As a matter of fact, 
olvidarse, to forget about something, you know, it's very, very common to, for people not to expect, accept responsibility that they forgot mm -hmm. about something. I didn't mean for this to happen. And if they're saying that to you, they are either absolving themselves of responsibility or telling you my intention was not to be a jerk and forget about that. Uh, right, but if you, are the, as the speaker, would say, oh dear, I forgot that. Pe people use that a lot you for forgotten. use this construction, would they get wrong at all? Would they would they use it without the same same No, though? if 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 I as is, as I'm trying to speak Spanish, I don't use the say construction because it doesn't occur to me. I say it the other. Oh my God, I forgot. Yeah. You know, and, uh, will they will they get that idea? Saying, I'm not get, that, yeah. That they'll get that idea because you're going to say something like, "I perdón." Right. I'm really sorry. Right. Right. Will they expect you to know all those little words? They probably won't. But, you know, they'll know you're trying to be apologetic because as a polite person, you'll say, disculpe, excuse me, perdón. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. what those little pardon me words are for. You know, the excuse me, <laughs> pardon me words. That's the way that happens. Um, okay. A ver. A ver, a ver, a ver. Ah, uh, bueno, hay más preguntas o no? Sí, Any um, other questions? Sí, sí. In the say impersonal homework, could uh -huh. you talk about word order? Do you put the noun first or can you put it at the end of the sentence? Because I have some examples that are both and I just kind of confuse myself. Okay. Uh, and you may have been confused because actually you heard her say that in the little video, that snippet of a video. Oh, but she kind of went over that quickly. <laughs> so the short answer to that is you have a great deal of flexibility for the word order. Uh, but it is extremely common for the se and the verb to come first. It is in, in, well, yeah, in, para mí, para mí, en mi opinión, es más común. So we'll, we'll bring those up and show what you had. Uh, if you did not pull out your little homework, or maybe you've got it on your computer, or maybe you have it printed somewhere, or just scribbled on paper, no importa tanto, doesn't matter so much, right? But we'll take a look at that screen so we can see it all together and know what we're talking about. Aquí vamos, here we go. Here is the easy say, because you're not having to remember two pronouns, just the say, by its lonesome. And it's even easier because it's say and a singular verb, or say and a plural verb. There's no yo, there is no tú, there is no nosotros conjugation. Okay, a ver, the post office is closed at five. Se cerra a las cinco. Se cierra a las cinco. Uh, se, se cierra, and we'll probably want to put post office in there. So, el correo. El correo es post office. Se cierra el correo. Se cierra el correo a las cinco. You could also say, es posible decir también, el correo se cierra a las cinco. Son iguales. El orden de las palabras no importa, no importa, no importa, no es importante. Está bien. Ah, las dos maneras de expresar son iguales. They are the same. So you can put the se cierra up front, which is how I prefer to do it. Or you can have it tag along into the middle because you've also got information about a time, right? A las cinco. So both ways are correct. And people would understand you and totally get what you were trying to say. Muy bien. ¿Cómo se dice la segunda frase? La segunda frase. In a kitchen, one cooks. 
en, uh, en una cocina. En una cocina. En una cocina. <laughs> se cocina. Yeah. Boy, it looks kind of repetitive, doesn't it? Yeah. En una cocina se cocina. You could also have phrased it this way. Se cocina en una cocina. One cooks. And notice one cooks means any old somebody. Right? That's the meaning of the se with that verb. Fantástico. El tercero. And I gave you the verb you need, entregar. This one's a little tricky. How many things are being delivered? Hmm. Plural. Plural. Mas si, es plural. Boxes. So we need that verb entregar to go into a plural form. Entregar. Because they are being delivered. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Uh, an idea of what we're going to do with entregar, with the se fragment. Entregan. Se. Se entregan. Entregan. Las cajas. Las cajas. Por. 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 By FedEx. Y FedEx es FedEx. Una marca. Una marca es FedEx. Sí. Se entregan las cajas por FedEx. Las cajas se entregan por FedEx. También correcto. También correcto. No importa. Las cajas so, se entregan por FedEx. Igual. Por and not para. Not para. Para would mean that the box's end destination is FedEx. Oh. Uh, <laughs> para indicates where something ends up. Uh -huh. Where its end point is. X marks the spot. That's para. Para is, is the X marks the spot word. Yeah. And you'll hopefully hear about that later tonight. You wait here. You wait here. Esperar to wait. Oh, ah, see, sí, Pat. Say espera. Ali. Oh, aquí. Se espera aquí. Se espera aquí. Can you say aquí se espera? Yes, you can. Si se puede. Si se puede. Yes, you can. Yes, one can. And you'll notice these yous are not you as in one single human being identified by a name. You means any old Joe Schmo, right? Anybody, anybody as you, the impersonal you. You use the microphone to talk. Se usa el microfono hablar. Se usa el microfono. Oh, perdón, microfono. Uh, para hablar. So I need para. para. Se usa el microfono para hablar. To, oh, could we change the English part of that to say you use the microphone in order to talk? Oh, that's what Yeah, we might say in English in order to. You may skip all the extra in order to words and just say to talk. The para is the in order to. Or we shorten that sometimes to. Ah. Wait, wait, wait I'm confused. Could okay. you do either? Could you just use hablar or do you need para hablar? Para hablar. You need para. Para. Okay. Se necesita para. Mm. One needs para. Se necesita para. Para hablar se usa el micrófono. Para hablar mm. se usa el micrófono. <laughs> o se usa el micrófono para hablar. Bien? Sí. Entendido? Understood? Okay. Sí. Ah, in the gym. Y yoga es yoga es yoga. <laughs> yoga. <laughs> ¿Verdad? No hay, no hay otra palabra para yoga. Yoga es yoga. Okay. In the gym. 
en el gimnasio. Gimnasio. En el gimnasio. Se practica. Se practica. Yoga. Yoga. Se practica yoga en el gimnasio. En el gimnasio se practica yoga. Son iguales. Iguales. Son iguales. Ah, el próximo. We got a not just a you see, but a you can see. Ah, uh -uh. not just you see, but you can see. Se puede ver. Se puede ver. El edificio. El edificio. El edificio. Ah, uh, ah, uh, oh, sí. Um. Allá, probably over there, allá. You probably want that way over there word. Uh, if you said IG, somebody would understand you mean there. Allá just puts it way off. Allá is the over of over there. Allá. Se puede ver el edificio allá. Not por allá. Could be por allá. Oh, could be por allá. We could do that if we wanted to. Es posible, en paréntesis, voy a escribir por allá, porque es, si se puede, se puede decir por allá también. So now, I'm confused, a, so now I'm confused again. Why would, sounds to me, if you did put in for, is confusing. For, if, I see that as for over there. Uh, yes. Um, por used with a directional thing indicates uh, kind of a physical space. Ah, better yet, it indicates a somewhat vague physical space. So here's a phrase you'll hear people use a lot, all over. Por aquí, por aquí, por aquí. I bet any of you who have traveled have heard por aquí. Por aquí means around here. Uh, so instead of por aquí, if we put instead, you know, aquí is the close to word, right? Here, close to. Uh, so if we just flip the word aquí for a farther off word, it's just por allá. Same thing. But they use por with that a lot to indicate a really vague and general vicinity vicinity. Para indicates an end point destination that's specific. Por in indicates a space that's vague, a vicinity, general, roundabouts, but non-specific. Not X marks the spot, but kind of around here or over there. Uh, you know, somebody waves their hand over there. Ah, you enter here. You enter here. Se entra aquí. Se entra aquí. Se entra aquí. Se entra aquí. Aquí se entra igual. You can flip the word over, order. Aquí se entra. Se entra aquí. And notice how that's all going to slide together. Se entra aquí. Ah, the famous forbidden, forbidden phrase. Oh, shit. Oh, estás bien? You okay? Yeah. <laughs> I hope you are okay. I think that's... Is that Betsy? Is that Betsy? Uh, just fell over. That's all right. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Perdón. Estás bien. You okay? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I've done that. Okay. Now, this one is almost always going to start off with this say. When you see this written, and this is often written on signs, by the way, really frequently. Okay. Ah, uh, se. Made the beer alcohol prohibito. Ah, sí. Se prohíbe. Se prohíbe. And that e e e, the h i, the e, 
gets an accent mark, it doesn't matter because you're not going to write it. Se prohíbe beber alcohol. 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 Se prohíbe beber alcohol. Se prohíbe entrar. Se prohíbe salir. Yeah, leaving this way is prohibited, right? Se prohíbe estacionar. No parking. Se oh. prohíbe estacionar. Estacionar is to park, like your car. Se prohíbe estacionar. Sí, I kid you not. Sorry, that, sí, on, sí, sí, Keith. Numero nueve there. So can the word order be different? Could it be safe? Beber prohíbe alcohol? Se prohíbe. Se beber prohíbe alcohol. Oh, uh, oh, no. No. Se prohíbe is the forbidden part. You need a se prohíbe and then the, the second action, it has to be an infinitive. I got you. Okay, so prohíbe is yeah. actually a verb as well. The se okay. prohíbe is, is, there are two verbs. They are two verbs, yeah. aren't they? That's I, can why see why you were, I can see why you were confused by that, Keith. That makes sense. Okay, let's, let's twist that a little bit, Keith, to say, see, see something else. Um, en el bar. En el bar. If you happen to be in one, right? Es obvio. En el bar. En el bar, um, se, se, se bebe vino. Se bebe vino. Uh, en el bar, uh, se bebe uh, cerveza. Right? Uh, beer is served. drunk, is consumed. Yeah. consumed. Right? Wine is consumed. Right, but that's not the same as it's forbidden to do this, and the to do this is the beber part. Se prohíbe beber, drinking forbidden. Se prohíbe entrar, going in is forbidden. Se prohíbe estacionar, parking is forbidden. Oh, I saw this one on a train once. Se prohíbe escupir, spitting is forbidden. Because, yeah, you know. Especially uh -huh. in Singapore. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Bien? Vale. Bueno. Ah, wine is served. El vino se sirve con cena. Se sirve vino con la cena. Now, this one, I don't know how to explain to you, but you're almost always going to hear it with se sirve first. Uh, unless somebody says it as a question like this. Vino. Asking you the question. Vino. Ah, se sirve aquí. It's served here. But usually the word order in this one is, is se sirve first, almost always. Se sirve vino con la cena. Mm. Ah, look at how this is going to change. See if you know what this means. Se sirve papas. Se sirven tapas con la cerveza. Tapas son hors d'oeuvres. Yeah. Se sirven tapas con la cerveza. Tapas are served with beer. Beer and munchies are served here. Beer, there you go. Exacto, Keith. E, e, exactamente. Si, señor. But se sirven, plural, because tapas, munchies, there oh. are more than one. Oh. Yeah, plural. Oh. So, yeah, the thing that is served determines if it's even, but it's always going to be se sirve or se sirven. You'll never hear se sirvo. People would give you a funny look with that. That wouldn't make sense. Or se sirves. That wouldn't make any sense. Se sirve, se sirven. Bien. Okay. Ah, uh, ooh, souvenirs. ¿Cómo se dice souvenirs? Recuerdos. Recuerdos. Magnífico. Okay. Como se dice, are sold. Se venden. Se 
Perfecto. Se venden. Recuerdos aquí. Recuerdos aquí. Se venden recuerdos aquí. A lot of times you just see se, se vende on a sign. And usually that's tacked up on a place, a, a building that's for sale. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, it might be in a store window where they have shoes displayed or, you know, whatever it is that store sells. And they now, say they, they will just mean for sale. Would they ever say los recuerdos se venden aquí? The uh, they, they might, but usually it's the se venden first. So usually. they're kind of, so it's, it's like they're telling you what they serve and what they sell first. They're telling you they- Usually they the verb, you, for, yeah. in, in most cases, the verb first, but you can flip the order around. It's flexible, it's a little flexible in most cases. It's forbidden. Oh, you already have one. It's forbidden. So here's another. It's forbidden. Se prohíbe. Se prohíbe. <laughs> Exacto. Se prohíbe. Oop, perdón. Se prohíbe. Ah, now we need the to take. Sacar. Tomar. It could be sacar or it could be tomar. They use both terms interchangeably. Se prohíbe sacar fotos. Se prohíbe tomar fotos. Es igual. It's the same. Some regions people like to use sacar for fotos. Some regions people like to use tomar for fotos. No importa. Alguien puede entender fácilmente. Somebody can understand easily either way. Okay. So, so Marilyn, um, what again is the universal rule for, for example, not putting in las in front of fotos? Uh, last in front of? Photos. Oh, photos. Uh, photos, this is just any old photos, not a specific stack of photos. Okay. Any old, any old, any old group, any old amount. So they just omit the last generally there. Okay. It's like the se sirven tapas. Tapas so, are served. It's implying, of, it's implying lost, some. Right. Los right. in this case would be more specific. Uh, yeah, exactly. Si, 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 si. You can't think of it that way. Absol absolutamente. Absolutamente si es perfecto. Okay. Question? Question? Si, si. Dime. Si, dime, so, Susana. For the, uh, the last one, it's se prohibe, not se prohiben, because photos is plural. That's where I kind of Oh, go. Susana, que buena pregunta. Eres lista. You are sharp. Okay. Uh, when the action is a verb, okay. when the thing forbidden is not an item, but an activity, that is always considered singular. Thank you. Okay, so se prohíbe beber alcohol, se prohíbe tomar fotos. Uh, and that goes back to something you learned a long time ago, and that is that activities are always taken in the singular. So I want you to think about this. Uh, when you learned to say this, me gusta tomar fotos, I like to take pictures. Me gusta tomar. What do I like? I don't like pictures. I like to take. Okay. And that to take is also what drives the gusta word to be a singular word. Me gusta tomar fotos. Me gusta beber vino. Me gusta, uh, me gusta dar clases de español. Me gusta hablar español. Me gusta practicar francés, pero no me gusta hablar francés. No me gusta pronunciar francés, porque mi acento francés es horrible. Así es. ¿Bien? Okay, gracias. Vale, de nada. ¿Tienen preguntas? You have any other questions about that? Tenían buenas preguntas. You guys had very good questions. ¿Hay más o no? No. 
No, no, no. Okay. A ver. Muy bien. Uh, I will post the answers for those who are maybe watching and, you know, don't feel, uh, we don't want people to feel that they have to furiously copy things. That's not what we're doing. Okay. A ver. Muy bien. Um, or if you're watching, if, if you call up the, the, what you sent us for homework online, in real mm -hmm. time, you're updating it online as well. That's true. It is updating. Well, I'm watching time. you do it right now. <laughs> Although I have to probably clean up some of my punctuation, etc. <laughs> uh, okay. A ver. Muy bien. Uh, and now I, uy, estoy muy consciente. I'm really conscious of that now. Did I put on my stuff? Did I put in my stuff? Yeah. Okay. A ver. Bien. Uh, bueno. Uh, pa, 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 pa. Lo que vamos a hacer ahorita, ahorita... Um, vamos a ver, tengo, tengo algunas preguntas uh, sobre la película, Cuerdas. I've got some questions about Cuerdas. Oh, yeah. Y me imagino que sería buen ejercicio hablar, hablar de, de sus ideas. Talk about your ideas. Y, y de los hechos, about the facts. See? Uh, I believe I sent these to you, but I am going to bring them up. Uh, I'm, I'm going to assume that you would, it would be easier if I brought these up on the screen. Mm -hmm. Tengo razón, am I right? Yes. Tengo razón? Okay. A ver. Muy bien. Uh, no tengo respuestas. I do not have, you know, sometimes there are not answers for these. These are just to drive conversation, guys. Eso es todo. That's it. ¿Qué recuerdas del cortometraje? What do you remember about that little... And cortometraje is short documentary or short film. Any film that is in the movie business, a short, is called cor cortometraje. Uh, okay, and you kind of see the word meter, metre, M-E-T-R, right? ¿Qué recuerdas? ¿Qué recuerdas del cortometraje? Son preguntas de comprensión. Son preguntas a veces que podemos, uh, que podemos, uh, debatir o discutir, we can kind of chit chat back and forth, podemos charlar, podemos charlar, we can chat sobre estas preguntas. Por ejemplo, si de, por ejemplo, ¿cómo se llama la protagonista? La protagonista character. La protagonista, ¿cómo se llama la protagonista? Es una chica. Sí. Yeah. Se llama María, se llama María, se llama María, no sabemos su apellido, we do not know her last name, se llama María, se llama María. ¿Y cómo se llama el niño? El niño no tiene un nombre. No tiene nombre, no sabemos, no sabemos, uh, no sabemos el nombre exactamente del niño. Oh. He's, he was on his was on his chart. Right. Ah, okay. Right. And I missed that. He, 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 no se me ocurrió. It did not occur to me. Y entonces, Keith, Keith y Karen, uh, ¿qué, ¿qué dijeron? What did they say? Uh, it was on his chart when he was handed, when they were handing him his, 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 with his medicines and his, oh, his stuff on the, on in the la lista. It, it, was it was very was, hard yeah. to read. Oh, en so la tabla, en la lista. Y es yeah. breve, ¿verdad? Sí. Era yeah. breve, it was brief. Uh -huh. Me imagino. Uh, no it, se me it, ocurrió it, ver a uh, la lista. Uh, ¿Y cuál, cuál era el nombre? Uh, Nicolás Solís. Nicolás. Nicolás. Oh. Nicolás. Ay, a ver, Nicolás. Sí tiene nombre. No sabía. I did not know. No sabía. Ustedes son listos. You guys are really sharp. No sabía. Okay. 
¿Dónde viven los niños? ¿Dónde viven? Mm. Viven en orfanato provincial. Oh, orfeonato, sí, orfeonato. Mm. En un orfeonato. En un orphanage. Municipal orphanage. Orfeonato, sí. Ah, uh, orfeonato, escribe eso correctamente o no. Momentito, vamos a ver. Ah, uh, escribe esto correctamente o no. Ah, uh, a ver, a ver. Orfeonato. Orfeonato. Orfanato, perdón. Orfanato. Orfanato. Lo escribí mal. Orfanato. Pa, 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 pa. Uf. Aún peor. Provincial. Se me perdió. I lost it. Oh, there's another one. Se me perdió. Oh, provincial. Provincial. Se me, sí. The, the, the okay. municipal orphanage. Yeah. Orfanato. Provincial. Orfanato. Provincial. Orf provincial. Provincial. Uh, provincial. Ah, orfanato. And now I know if I click on it, it'll give me the wrong. Orfanato. Son huérfanos. Son huérfanos. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, los huérfanos viven en el edificio. Marilyn, ¿puedes escribir esto en un whiteboard? Oh, I sí, perdón. Uh, uh, no es un whiteboard, es la lista de preguntas. ¿Did I share that or did I not hit the share? No. Ay, perdón. Perdón, porque no puedo ver el botón. Ahora sí, ¿verdad? Now you can see it. Sí, ah, ahora sí. Ahora sí. Ahora se puede ver. Now one can see. Ahora se puede ver. Guy, perdón. Gracias oh, por decirme. Sí, sí. A ver. Orfanato. Es un orf orfanato. Huérfanos son orphans. Son huérfanos. Los huérfanos viven en el ed edificio. Pero ella dice, la niñita, la niña María dice, ah, bienvenido a la co a, a, al cole. Bienvenido al cole. Mm -hmm. ¿Qué quiere no, decir cole? School. School. Cole quiere decir school. Cole es una palabra breve. Uh, para, uh, perdón, para colegio. Ah, es una palabra breve para colegio. You can see how they get to cole from colegio. Yes. Okay. Instead of saying profesor, they say profe, right? Instead of colegio, mm -hmm. a lot of people say cole. Es colegio. School. Ah. ¿Qué es jugar a la comba? ¿Qué es jugar a la comba? Es jump rope. Jump rope. Es un juego de las niñas. Es, es un juego de niños, sí. Es un juego in, uh, juvenil o infan, infantil. Infantil o juvenil. Uh, it's a childhood game. Un juego de la niñez. A childhood game. Infantil. Doesn't mean infantile. It looks like infantile. A childhood game. Uh, ¿Qué deporte también juega? ¿Qué deporte juega María con el niño? El fútbol. El fútbol. Sí. Juega al fútbol. Juega al fútbol porque ella estaba pensando, ah, ah, eres un niño, Nicolás. Claro, te gusta el fútbol. A todos los niños les gusta el fútbol. Entonces, los dos juegan al fútbol. Ella juega al fútbol con Nicolás. De su manera, in her way. Uh -huh. De su manera, ¿verdad? Sí. 
le sí. importa a María la discapacidad de su amigo? ¿Le importa? No. No. No le importa. No le importa para nada. No le importa para nada. Para nada es como decir a uh, not at all. Para nada. No le importa para nada. But, but Marilyn, no le importa a María will also be correct. Sí, sí, claro. No le importa a María. No le importa a María. Para clarificar qué le indica la niña, pero porque estamos contestando la pregunta, ya sabemos. We already know. Ya sabemos que refiere a María. Ah, sí. Entonces, no es necesario para, para dar la información de, de dar énfasis, de dar énfasis, sí, no le importa a María para nada, no le importa a María para nada. This would just make it very, very emphatic. Vale, ¿cuáles son otras actividades que hacen los, uh, que, que hacen juntos? ¿Qué son otras actividades? Leer y vale. Leen. Leen. Uh, bailan en, en, en su ensueño, en her dream. Sí. En su ensueño. Bailan. Uh, oh, hay otro juego infantil. Hay otro juego infantil. Uh. Palmas, clapping, uh, the hide and seek, mm -hmm. um, el escondido, al escondite. escondite, se dice el, al escondite, juegan al escondite, juegan al escondite, el escondite. escondite es hide and seek, mm -hmm. uh, esconder es el verbo, sí, ah, uh, un momentito, Uy, a ver. Ah, pa, 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 pa. Ah, uh, uh. Deshacer, that undo button is wonderful. Okay. <laughs> I've got a touch pad and when my, the heels of my hands hit it too hard, everything disappears. Juegan al escondite. Y a uh, esconder se is to hide oneself. Esconderse is to hide oneself. So you can see how they get the noun, escondite. And the ite sounds like they're making it little, yeah? And that means it's a little game. Escondite. Los niños um, cuentan juntos. They count together. They count. Oh, quit. Cuentan. Oh. Cuentan juntos, sí. Cuentan juntos. They count together, sí. Y, es verdad. Tienes razón. Y los niños juegan los piratas juntos. They played pirates together. Ah, ah sí, 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 sí. Ah, juegan, ah, juegan ah, fantasías, fantasías, ¿no? Uh, sí. Juegos de fantasía, juegos de fantasía. Juegos de fantasía. De fantasía, sí, como piratas, exacto. Pirata, uh, piratas y doncellas, doncellas a damsel. <laughs> yes. Doncellas, sí. damsel, sí, juegos de fantasía. De ejercicio. Ej ah. Sí, tienes razón, sí. Ah, y sí, sí hace, hacen ejercicio. Hacen oh. ejercicio, sí. Uno, dos, uno, dos, uno, dos. Sí, con, con las piernas, con los brazos. Así era, so it was. ¿Algo más o, o no? Volaban una cometa. Oh, exacto, sí, Susana. 
Ah, oh, sí, sí. Volaron una cometa. Una cometa no es Kamet. Una cometa es Kite. Tienes razón. Se me olvidó. I forgot. Se me olvidó. Se me olvidó totalmente. Pero tienes razón. Volaron una cometa. They flew a kite. Ah, kite. E. La E. Bien. Magnífico. ¿Por qué no puede salir a jugar el niño un día, un día? ¿Por qué no? Y es mejor decir quizás, ¿por qué no pudo? Uh -huh. Why couldn't he? Why couldn't he? Había un día. There was one uh, day. Estuve demasiado cansado. Sí, estaba, estaba, estaba muy, muy cansado. Uh, estaba muy cansado o quizás cansadísimo. Cansadísimo. Super tired. I think they said cansadito. Uh, sí. Uh, yeah, they were just... Otra palabra, sí. Oh. Cansadito, sí. Estaba muy cansado. Estaba muy enfermo. Mm -hmm. sí. uh, María no se dio cuenta. Did not realize. María no se dio cuenta de que estaba... Realmente enfermo. Marilyn, I interpreted that question to say in general, why can't, why couldn't he go out to play? Ah. I, I wrote El Nino tiene cerebral palsy. Ah, okay. But sí. that's not, what did I miss? Ah, uh, eh, no, no. Ah, uh, eh, eh, estás bien. Um, what you missed, but you didn't, the way I phrased it, <laughs> the way I phrased it threw you off a bit. Uh, el niño uh, tiene uh, discapacidad. Mm. Tiene discapacidad. He has a, a, a handicap. Yeah. Yeah. Disability. Uh, yeah, sí. Uh, and the way I phrased that question, I didn't really talk about that last day. Mm. En su último encuentro, ¿sí? El último día. El último día. Uh, cuando toca uh, la música uh, del disco, disco, ¿sí? Record player tiene un tocadiscos. Tocadiscos is a record player, ¿sí? Uh, ahora no tenemos tocadiscos. Now we no longer have record players very much. Mm. <laughs> Pero, ¿qué pasa en el ensueño? Ensueño es a daydream. ¿Qué pasa en el, en el ensueño de María? Oh. Mm -hmm. uh, ellos bailan. Ellos bailan. Bailan juntos. Bailan juntos. Sí. Ellos bailan juntos. Un vals. Bailan un vals. Muy, algo muy formal, ¿verdad? Mm -hmm. con, con un vestido largo y... Uh, and in formal yeah, sí, for, sí, un, un traje muy formal. Él tiene un smoking. He's got a tux. Un smoking es un tux. Smoking jacket. Un smoking es un tux. So, ¿Sí? Marilyn, música del disco isn't disco music. That's what I thought. I thought music, that's sí. Disco. La música del disco, the record player music. Oh. Yeah, the record, the music on the record. Porque siempre hay música en un, una película, ¿verdad? Pero tenía un tocadiscos. They didn't have a record player, ¿sí? Del mm -hmm. disco. Y disco no es disco like discotech. Aquí mm -hmm. es, you know, disco, uh, the record, the record itself. Ah, cuando María ve la silla de ruedas y la cuerda, la cuerda en la silla dice, soy, ah, primero ella dice, oh, soy la mejor entrenadora del mundo. ¿Qué quiere decir? What does that mean? Soy la mejor entrenadora del mundo. The best coach. I'm yes. the best coach in the world. He's walking. Yes. That's what she thought. Sí. Ah, exacto. I'm the best coach in the world. Sí. 
Sí. ¿Qué cree que pasó? What does she think happened? María um, cree oh, que su amigo está um, um, andando, um, walking. Sí, and cree, que, cree que su amigo está andando. Andando. Está caminando. Por fin. ¿Sí? ¿Cree que su amigo está andando? ¿Que puede usar las piernas? Ella, ella cree que... Cree que puede uh, andar. Que puede caminar. Que puede correr. Que puede moverse como todos los niños. Sí. Y está muy orgullosa. She's very proud. Está muy orgullosa. Es preciosa. ¿Por qué guarda la cuerda? Why does she keep the cord? ¿Por qué guarda? Guarda es keep. To keep something and put it away for your possession. ¿Por qué guarda la cuerda, María? So when I started to answer that, I, I got confused right away because María was at the end. Is it possible, is it correct also to put Maria after por qué? Se puede. ¿Por qué Maria guarda la cuerda? Se puede. ¿Por qué Maria guarda la cuerda? Se puede expresar así. You can express it that way. Es posible. Ok. Ok, ¿está bien? Sí. ¿Qué mm -hmm. creen ustedes? ¿Por qué guarda la cuerda? Para recuerda a su amigo. Ah, como un recuerdo, exactamente. Como un recu a recuerdo de su amigo. Mm -hmm. ah, para recordar a su amigo. Para recordar, in order to remember. remember, para recordar a su amigo, como un recuerdo de su amigo. Ah, para, para no olvidarse ah. Ah, de su amigo, para no olvidarse, para no olvidarse nunca de su amigo. Es precioso. Eh, ok. ¿Y en qué se convierte? Com se convierte, turn into, become, become. To convert oneself into, this is a reflexive. And this phrase, se convierte, means to become as a natural progression of things. Mm. María, María se convierte. Okay. Ella se convierte en a, una maestra de en, la educación especial. Sí, en maestra, en maestra, en maestra de educación especial. En. Técnicamente, pero sí, se convierte en maestra. Profesora. Sí. Sí, Kip, dime. Bien. Ok. Marilyn, ¿qué sí. es profesora y maestra the same? Son iguales, sí. Okay. Y una otra pregunta: ¿por qué hay un N before the K? Why is it N uh, is it, it just needs that. That verb just needs that. <laughs> There's a very dissatisfying answer. It, convertirse en. It just needs that. Se convierte en. Uh, that means that as an, in the natural progression of time, she just actually 
yeah, I'm a natural progression of time. She already was one, but she became yeah. one. Yeah, exacto. Okay. A ver. ¿Te gustó la película? Did you like the film? Yes. I have another one you can watch next week. So because we're on the topic of films, uh, it, but it's a segment, I am going to warn you, it goes very fast. Mm. It, it goes fast. <laughs> so it will be hard. So if you get totally discombobulated, <laughs> don't worry. But watch a couple times. <laughs> it, it is a major, major, major tearjerker. Well, not the part you will see. Not the part you will see. This is a movie of a book I read. Maybe six, seven years ago. Six, I don't know. Anyway, yeah, a while back. Es una novela muy popular, popular, popularísima. It is a super popular book. And they turned this super popular book into a movie. I did not even know it was out there. Somebody told me in one of my other classes, hey, did you know this thing? Oh my God, I did not know. No sabía. Uh, and it is in, um, it was broken into um, segments. It was done as a serial. So I'm going to send you to, uh, um, give you a link in the email. Um, it is called an, oh, como se llama? Como se llama? Momentito. Uh, el tiempo entre costuras. El tiempo entre costuras. Literally, the time between stitches. Mm. Oh, sounds odd. <laughs> but um, if you've got the gumption, to keep going with it, I'll give you um, episode one. It is on episode, el primer episodio, el primer episodio. Uh, I had to go to a bit of web searching to find this because I found a Greek subtitled version. <laughs> I tried to buy it, but it was like 60 bucks. Yeah, didn't want to do that. I finally found a place where at least there are some episodes. I don't know if it'll have the whole thing. I know if you have the, the gumption and stick to you can go on YouTube and find it totally for free. But it's broken into so many segments, and they are not sequential. Mm. So that's why I did not go straight to YouTube, because it was not in sequential order. And I'm like, uh, where does it say episode two, three, five? And like the first one was episode 15. So I said, this is far too confusing to ask them to follow this because I can't even find it. So anyway, I am going to send you the first episode. Go with it. I believe, uh, I'm quite sure you can put up the subtitles. It will go fast. Uh, but again, it's a good practice for you for this reason because you will have so many visual cues for what is going on. You know, so... Uh, just see how much you can pull together. It starts out as a very cute story, but it won't stay cute for real long. <laughs> oh, no. It is a, yeah. Because, you know, really, in all Spanish and Latin American, great literature or great stories, yeah, they go it's so. sex, violence, war, alcoholism. <laughs> what am I leaving out? <laughs> Losing all your money. <laughs> You know, if there's not like major oh, disaster, if there are not major disasters, it's not an interesting story. Uh, mm. So, uh, and this does not fall technically into that realm of telenovela. You may know the realm of telenovela, which are TV series, which are soaps. Soap opera, yeah. It is a soap e kind of feel to it, but it's much more serious than soap e. And Kind of like a country music uh, song. A <laughs> song? <laughs> there, I see Tomas. The truck hit my dog. It's way more serious than the truck hit my dog. Yeah. Uh, but it is a time, uh, a story told in wartime, but they will start off with the fun, innocent part. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, there you go. Uh, so anyway, we will send you off with that in the email. I will send it, the, the link in the email. Okay. A ver. Um, ba, 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 ba. Pori para, pori para, pori para. We're going to do una lección muy corta. We're going to do a little quick lesson. I'm going to uh, actually 
have you watch this. This is a super short video we will watch together. And, and she talks about breaking this concept of porampara into very general realms, two general realms, okay? Uh, which we can get down into the nitty gritty, but we're gonna only look at a few reasons of porampara because really the way that you learn porampara most effectively is sadly to learn it gradually because if you learn it as a set of rules, you will continually be breaking your mind down into a numerical list and you'll be yeah. staring <laughs> off into infinity thinking, was that number 10 or number 12? <laughs> and it will drive you crazy. <laughs> hmm. So what you want to try to do is to break down porampara into some general ideas so that you can apply a general idea rather than a specific set of rules. If you are studying formally for university, you do need to know those specific rules. So I'm just saying, but uh, I will play this for you and I've got to do some fiddling here and move my screens to the two different screens because uh, yeah. Google thing does not like shared screen. Okay. A ver. Uh, son ideas muy generales, muy generales con por y para. Uh, you will get the link to this. Don't, so don't feel like you've got a copy, copious notes. You'll get the link for this as well. Okay. Is it por or is it para? If you ever struggled with this question, this video is for you. But first, let me dispel a myth. They are usually told that they both mean for. This isn't wrong, but it's not entirely true. There are many translations for por and para in English, and it all depends on the context. Por can mean for, because of, through, by, over, per, instead of, to. Oh, look at that. It can mean over. It can mean over. Por aquí. Over here. Por allá. Over there. It can mean over. Look at all those things that por means. But it depends on the context. For, because of, through, by, over, per, instead of, to. Oh my God, really? You're going to memorize all those? Probably not. But if you get to know them by context, makes para sense. can mean for, in order to, by, to, according to. The key thing to understand the differences between por and para is trying to understand what you would like to convey rather than just try to find an exact translation. Prepositions like for, over, to, they don't have an exact match in another language. We know it can take a while to get a sense for these things, so we have a really simple technique to make you understand when to use por and when to use para. First things first, both por and para link two parts in a sentence. But the main difference is this. With para, there is usually a sequence of events. One bit of the sentence happens after the other. For example, Salgo para Barcelona mañana. I'm leaving for Barcelona tomorrow. So check this out. The first part of the sentence says that I'm leaving, and the second part says that I will arrive in Barcelona tomorrow. One thing happens after the other. With por, however, everything usually happens at the same time. The two events occurring in the same sentence are not separable. For example, el ladrón entró por la ventana. The thief got inside through the window. That's why para, it usually conveys some kind of purpose, aim, or destination. That's why it's usually future-facing. It signals things to come. Por, on the other hand, usually describes a cause for something. And that's why it's backward facing. It usually opens a window back in time. Now let's move on to the longer, more complete method. So, por is for reason and para is for purpose. Use por to talk about the reason for doing something. In this case, it means because of. Estudio español por mi trabajo. 
I'm studying Spanish because of my work. Use para to talk about the purpose for doing something. In this case, you can translate it as in order to. Estudio español para trabajar en Argentina. I'm studying Spanish in order to work in Argentina. Por is for traveling. Para is the final destination. Por describes traveling through or around the place. Este autobús pasa por el centro de la ciudad. This bus goes through the city center. Para describes traveling to a place. It refers to the final destination of a journey. Este autobús va para el centro de la ciudad. This bus goes to the city center. Por is for duration. Para is for deadlines. Use por to talk about how long something lasts. A trick for this is to translate it in English as during. So the trick here is that you should be able to switch por for durante in this scenario. For example, estudié por dos horas, which means exactly the same as estudié durante dos horas. I studied for two hours. We use para to refer to a time in the future, typically when there is a deadline looming. For example, necesito terminar el informe para mañana. I need to finish the report by tomorrow. Por is by someone. Para is for someone. Por refers to someone who did something. Este puente fue construido por los romanos. This bridge was built by the Romans. Para refers to the person something was done for. For example, compré este libro para mi hermana. I bought this book for my sister. Hanging in there so far? Nice job! Now, let's have a look at three common phrases that you will hear in Spanish conversations. They all have por o para. They're definitely worth remembering. Para mí, in my opinion. You can say creo que to give your opinion in Spanish, but if you want to sound more authentic, you can introduce your opinion by saying para mí. For example, para mí, tienes toda la razón. In my opinion, you are absolutely right. Por aquí, around here. If you have a rough idea about where something is, like you don't know exactly where, you can use por to describe its whereabouts. For example, no hay ningún cine por aquí. Creo que hay uno por el centro. There isn't any cinema around here. I think there is one around the city center. Por teléfono, on the phone. As well as por teléfono, you can also say por correo electrónico, por internet, por televisión. For example, anoche hablé con Ana por teléfono. Last night, I spoke to Ana on the phone. And just remember, don't focus on memorizing all the rules if you can't. Just try to think about the meaning that you would like to convey instead. Look for patterns. The more you expose yourself to Spanish, you will realize that there are certain expressions that will always use por and others that will always use para. And after a while, you won't even have to think about it. You will just know it. Por describes traveling. Momentito. Momentito. Okay. Now you may not believe that thing she said about you will just know it, <laughs> but you will. But you will. Uh, we're going to practice that a little bit next week. We're going to do some short translations in class next week. So I'm going to sign to you uh, uh, watching that video again. Now, the reason I liked that so very intensely, and I really, really do like that video is that she puts a twist on that that I've never heard anybody else say. I've often heard people say, oh, you know, well, you know, para, para is destination, right? And uh, por kind of meanders, but it doesn't get to the point like para does, okay? Uh, and para does indicate a destination. So we're gonna look at that kind of in a graphic form, maybe a different way again next week together. Um, but this whole idea of para being something that happens at the end, one thing occurs first and the second thing occurs later afterwards, that gets you to that point of thinking, yeah, it's a destination. It's what happens after the first part of the sentence. 
Okay, so her idea of uh, salimos para Barcelona. Uh, we're leaving for Barcelona. We're leaving, and after we do the leaving, at the very end, we'll get to Barcelona. One thing happens first, and the other thing follows afterwards. Okay, so it's going into the future. It's forward facing, she called it. It goes into the future. One event happens, and para indicates what happens later. But el ladrón entró por la ventana. The uh, thief came in through the window. Well, that was his means of getting in. It, it was just those two things happening at the same time. The thief's doing a break in. And you know, the fiddling with the lock or you know, whatever on the window or smashing the glass, whatever, right? It's all happening at the same time. Uh, so I want you to rewatch that video and just kind of ponder it. We'll have some drills to kind of figure that out because this is one of those things that you hear people use a lot. Um, and sometimes you can grammatically use both por and para in the exact same sentence, but it changes the meaning. Mm -hmm. And we'll see how that works. Yeah, next week. Uh, so we're going to take a look at that because you may hear people throw those around and it, it's a good thing to know. And it's good to know what are little phrases that will just typically, you ought to have, know it, what is this? Like, por aquí, por aquí, por aquí. Por aquí, around here. You ask for directions. Ah, está, está por aquí, está por aquí, está por aquí. Vaguely. That's why somebody's like, está por aquí. It's around here somewhere. Um, okay. So uh, it's good to know these little things. We're going to take... We're not going to take real technical, gee, I'm going to read this in a, a financial report kind of stuff. <laughs> We're going to take it through stuff that people really will say. Uh, that something is happening tomorrow. Uh, that something is coming through this passageway. Stuff that you actually would be using. Okay, so we're going to put in real life scenarios. And we'll be thinking about this one thing happen after another. Or are they kind of same time kind of thing. Está bien? Sí, Juanita. Dime. Oh, Juanita, tienes pregunta? You have um, a question? I, I just want to say I liked watching a movie and having the questions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, because it, it helped me to pull some stuff together. And, and I'd like, yeah, I'd like you to really try to watch that. But it, it's going to be tough with this movie because it's not going to be slow moving. Mm -hmm. And you know, and, and so here's the other thing too. So now Fred, I'm saying, especially for you, Federico, <laughs> <laughs> I do not, well, I do not want anybody because it is going to go fast. Do not let yourself feel discombobulated. So what you should do is, I, I kid you not, let it wash over you. Take all those visual cues. Because believe me, when people talk fast in a movie in English, you really are doing the same thing. You're not always catching, even in English, every single word they said. And if you stopped a movie 10 minutes in, you probably aren't going to be able to quote word for word. But you're going to be going by the visual cues as well as what they're saying. So I do want you to go with the flow and go with the general idea, to go with the gist. And you are probably going to have some questions about, you know, episodio numero uno. You're probably going to have questions where, where things where you knew what was going on and, and what they were talking about in general and others where you're not quite sure. And that's okay. And we're going to gear questions to that so that we'll talk about this little episode of the movie. So even if you feel that it is painful, <laughs> do watch that one. And, and if it's a total bust and you really don't like it, we can stop it right there. But I think it, vale la pena. It is worth the, it is worth the effort. It is, vale la pena. It is worth the pain. It is worth the trouble. Vale la pena. Uh, to stretch yourself 
a little. And, and don't try to get every grammatical thing. Go for the big idea. That's what you're doing when you're listening to people in real life. No? Es lo que todos hacemos. Es lo que todos hacemos en la vida, en la vida diaria, cuando conversamos con varias personas. When we talk with different people, you don't know what's going to come out of their mouths. And that is, you know, yeah. That is the way real life happens. So you're not going to know which way the story. I'm not even going to tell you, except that she has a trade. She will buy. It's a reputable trade. Uh, okay. 